In the previous lesson, we went over the basics of using a manually adjustable virtual analog filter. In this lesson, we will add in a filter envelope generator. And a filter LFO. Let's head over to the BP Filter 2 project and take a look in ADSR.C. When we look at the top, we see we have created a new ADSR struct type variable called filter EG. We're going to point to this structure like we did when we used the AMP EG with our ADSR functions. All the parameters we need to track for our filter EG will be stored in this struct. ADSR init will now be used for both the AMP EG and the filter EG. You can see a new function called to ADSR init in wavegen.c's synth init right here. ADSR init at address of filter eg. We're also going to add ADSR key on and key offs in the MIDI note on and MIDI note off functions for the filter eg alongside the previous ones for amp eg. Each time we have a note begin to play or end, we will have two envelope generators running, one for amp and the other for filter. In MIDI control changes, we will have new control changes that will call functions to alter the filter EG's struct values. Control changes 45 through 48. Those functions they call are found in ADSR.C down here. We have attack filter EG set, decay filter EG set, sustain filter EG set, and release filter EG set. These filter envelope generator functions run nearly identical to the envelope generator functions for the AMP EG. They also use the same functions to assign values to the filter EG struct members. Instead of pointing to AMP EG, we simply change the pointer to point to filter EG. The ADSR compute sample for the filter EG is called in wavegen.c make sound and it's found right down here in the set filter value function. You will also notice that we have added a modulator here one plus filter LFO dot out. This is going to be our LFO modulator but we'll get back to this in a bit. Looking again at ADSR compute sample, you will notice we have a 22 added at the end. As mentioned in the previous lesson, this multiplier is used to fill in for modulations we will add in at a later time. Now getting back to the filter LFO, let's take a look in MIDI control changes to see a couple new control changes added in. Control change 66, filter 1 LFO frequency set, and control change number 72, filter 1 LFO amp set. These functions are found in parameter functions.c right here. Filter LFO amp set will assign a value between 0 and 32 to the filt LFO dot amp struct member. Filt LFO frequency set will assign a value of 0 through 12 to filt LFO frequency. And the reason why it's set to 0 to 12 is because max vibrato frequency equals 12 at this time. Naturally, you could change that if you want to, but that's what it's set to in the example. Let's take a look in oscillators.c, and you'll see at the top we have a new oscillator T struct called filt LFO. We're going to use this with a new wave shape function called filter triangle LFO, which is down here. When we call this oscillator, it will return a value with a range of 0 to 32 
because our filter EG amp can be 0 to 32, as seen in parameterfunctions.c filter LFO amp set. 0 to 32 is multiplied against a range of 0 to 1 from these operations. This oscillator is basically the same code as the basic triangle oscillator. But instead of the output ranging from negative 1 to plus 1, it will output a 0 to plus 1. Let's head back to take a closer look at set filter value in make sound. We have three values at play here. Filter frequency, filter LFO amplitude, and filter ADSR amplitude, which can translate into set filter value, filter frequency, times filter LFO amplitude, times filter ADSR amplitude. Filter frequency's values will be in a range of 0 to 0 0.06875. We can figure this out by running through the math for the filter frequency set equation. Filter frequency equals minimum frequency times max frequency divided by minimum frequency to the power of value divided by MIDI max divided by sample rate. The equation will use 20 for minimum frequency, 2200 for maximum frequency, and sample rate will equal 32,000. Val divided by MIDI max will range from 0 0.007874 to 1. Feel free to run the math with various values from VAL divided by Minimax. VAL will be a control change data value ranging from 0 to 127. You may notice that the values will increase exponentially. There's very little change in values until you reach the last quarter of MIDI control change values, very similar to an exponential volume control. Here are two quick examples. When value equals 127, 20 times 2200 divided by 20 to the power of 127 divided by 127 divided by 3200 breaks down to 20 times 110 to the power of 1 divided by 3200 equals 0 0.06875. This is going to be our max filter frequency value. Now when value equals 1, it will be 20 times 2200 divided by 20 to the power of 1 divided by 127 divided by 3200, which breaks down to 20 times 110 to the power of 0 0.00787 divided by 3200 which further breaks down to 20 times 1.0377 divided by 3200 and that equals 0 0.0006485. This will be our minimum filter frequency value that is not zero. We already know that the filter LFO amplitude will be 1 to 33 and the value from the ADSR section will be 0 to 22. Maximum values in our operation will look like this. Set filter value 0 0.06875 times 33 times 22, which would equal 49.91. Here in a bit we will see that this is way higher than the max value allowed because the setting of filter frequency, which is our main filter cutoff knob, is open fully we can't hear any modulations. But if we lower it down to around 25% by using a MIDI control change value of 32 instead of 127 in our filter frequency equation, we'd have something like this. 20 times 2200 divided by 20 to the power of 32 divided by 127 divided by 3200 which breaks down to 20 times 
110 to the power of 0 0.2520 divided by 32,000 which is 20 times 3.2691 divided by 32,000, which equals 0 0.002043. So when we take the value of 0 0.002043 and use it in our calculation, we end up with 0 0.002043 times 33 times 22, which equals 1.48, which is much closer to a 1 than before. But we are that high because all the modulators are at max values. We will hear modulation, but we don't get a full swing of the effect. Let's keep the filter frequency the same, but lower the LFO amp modulator by half. Set filter value 0 0.002043 times 15 times 23 equals 0 0.7048. Now we are able to fully hear the entire modulation effect. So you can see that this is a balancing act but becomes more intuitive when actually using the cutoff, envelope generator, and LFO depth controls together versus hard setting the values like we are doing here. Now if we take a look inside dspfilter.c and take a look inside the set filter value function, we can see the first operation it does is if val is greater than 0 0.73, val equals 0 0.73. Remember in our first example, we ended up with a total value of 49.91. Here you can see why I said it was way too high. But because of this limiter code, we can be assured we won't be passing on a value that is beyond what the filter code can work with. I placed a small comment that this limiter could be adjusted slightly if you'd like. It's currently set to work well with all the waveforms we will be using now and additional ones we'll create in future lessons. You can see there's a lot going on in there and each part has its own influence on the final value. In later lessons, we will code many more LFO waveforms for use with not only the filter, but the vibrato and tremolo as well. In the next lesson, we're going to add tremolo modulation and portamento.